Every day we show up to do a recap of the Miami Heat, and that's a hell of a lot more consistent than the team itself, who blew out a much better Cavs team two nights ago and then rolled over and died late in the game against a Warriors team that might miss the playoffs. How the hell do you analyze a team that changes on a daily basis? No idea. We give it our best shot on today's episode of Locked On Heat. You are Locked On Heat, your daily Miami Heat podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. All right, welcome to Locked On Heat, your daily podcast on the Miami Heat. I'm Wes Goldberg, editor at allyoucanheat.com. Joining me as always, it's longtime NBA reporter David Rimmel. However you're tuning in on YouTube, Odyssey, your favorite podcast app. Thanks for making Locked On Heat your first listen every day. On April 5th, we are holding a Locked On Heat watch party for the Heat's game in Houston at the Taurus in Coconut Grove. We cannot wait to meet some of you people and watch a Heat game, throw back some beers, and have some fun and hopefully see the Heat win a game. Uh, Happy Hour is going to be extended throughout the game. That includes two-for-one draft beers and two-for-one house liquors and a few surprise offers. And if tonight's, if, if that game is anything like tonight's, <laughs> we are going to need all, all the alcohol we can get. Again, April 5th at the Taurus in Coconut Grove for Heat Rockets. Game starts at 8 p.m. Eastern time. Happy Hour going all night long. We really hope you can come by. Let's jump into this uh, game, David. We're here recording this from Kaseya Center on Tuesday night after the Heat lost to the Warriors 113-92. to Um I want to get into whether or not like this was a must-win game, and it's starting to feel like every game is almost a must-win game here. Yeah. Uh, and we'll get we'll jump into some of your listener questions later on, including some existential ones in terms of what even is the Miami Heat and what are we even doing here. Uh, but this was a game, and my take where the Heat they were kind of sort of in it for a little while, and it just sure. kind of felt like okay, the Warriors came in, they were healthy, Steph and Clay got going, Jonathan Kaminga got going. And that was really it. And Miami just couldn't really find any answers. I thought they were in this game for the first half, mostly because Haywood Highsmith had 13 points and made all three of his three-pointers in that first half. And then there was no Haywood Highsmith in the second half, right? Nobody else was kind of stepping up. And no Jimmy Butler, no Tyler Hero, no Duncan Robinson, no Kevin Love, no Josh Richardson. Like, there's just so many guys missing from this rotation. And so, look, Eric Spolster loves to say we have enough, but... This was a game where we have enough was not enough against a fully healthy Warriors team that also needed to win desperately. Yeah, um, it's it's really hard to kind of pin your anything in particular about this team, right? Obviously, the the constantly changing lineups, the players in and out, nothing about this team feels so bad and so desperate that it's just woe is me, and you kind of go, oh, this team sucks, blow it up, etc. Although some people. Very few people do feel that way. And there's also the promise, the, the possibility of this team finding a way to, to rise up to the challenge of the playoffs. But they're, they just don't play very well sometimes. And it's so frustrating because you never know what version of this team you're going to get. I don't think I would have expected this team to play this badly, even without Jimmy Butler, the late scratch, even without Tyler and all the other injuries that have been mounting over the last few weeks. And yet... They had a first half lead, and then not until that third quarter did things fall apart for them. And then completely in the fourth quarter, with about nine minutes left in the game, they were down six. And then the Warriors go on was it a thirteen to four run? Yeah, just completely blowing the doors open. Miami by that point exhausted, looking for answers, and not really having anybody on the roster or available tonight that could come up with any kind of quick solution for that. And they just they were struggling all night. No shots were falling, and I know it's easy to just say, oh, what their, their three point shots weren't really falling. But they were struggling from three-point range. They weren't able to get to the rim. Terry Rozier, who's their best shot creator at this point, realistically, had a pretty rough shooting night, so he was a little inefficient as well. Tough game for him. And without that kind of combination of no three-point shooting, nobody who can get shots at the rim, no source of offense, no easy source of offense, as we've seen too often with his team, they just really didn't have any opportunity to really try to take over the game. They made one three-pointer the entire second oh, half. Uh, oh, no you. three-point shooting is – that's almost zero three-point shooting. It's one more than zero three-point shooting. And uh, I, I, I hear you when you say, like, it felt like this team they, – like, they were in it. It always felt like they were fake in it. 
it never really felt like they were in it for real. I, I was talking with some Warriors reporters yeah. at halftime, and they were like, yeah, I think like the Heat are going to win this game. And, and I'm like, I don't know. It just yeah. – it, it, Steph hasn't even got going yet. He only had like seven points in the first half. Haywood, like I already said, he went off in the first half, and it felt like the only reason Miami was even in it was because Haywood Highsmith was scoring. And I know people are like, well, that's why Miami has enough. They always find these guys. And it's like, well, was Haywood going to score 26 points in this game? Because that was the only way that they were going to win this. Like, who's the, who's the Haywood Highsmith of the second half? Right. And it was a rough shooting night for Caleb. He went 0 for 4 from three-point range. Jaime Hakas Jr. was 1 for 4 from three-point range. 4 yeah. for 10 overall. Really Nobody bad. else really had it going. Nikola Jovic kind of started well and then cooled off. Didn't play but if much. you don't find that other guy, right. it's just not going to happen. And Bam had an okay – like, Bam had a good game, all things good. considered. 24 good. points, 9 rebounds, 5 assists. I don't even know where those 5 assists came from. There's nobody – none of his teammates were Nobody else shot. was hitting shots. Those might have been, like, those fake assists that the scorekeeper just gives well, people in Memphis. <laughs> but I don't I, – I just – I look at this, and I'm not even frustrated anymore. It's – this is – you went up against a fully healthy Warriors team, and this team has not been fully healthy for – basically all season long and i i just don't buy the we have enough thing and i think that's okay because the team is 39 and 33 and on the brink of being a playing team for the second straight season like they don't have enough they need their best players on the court they need somebody i yeah. I, I think look i disagree with you in that sense that we they don't have enough because we've seen terry have a bigger game we've seen Jaime have a bigger game we've seen guys step up to that point but I also agree with your assessment of it, the fake being in it. There was something unrealistic, untenable about watching this team maintain a first half lead and mm -hmm. say, what's going to happen in the second half? Because it's, it wasn't overpowering anybody. It's not like you have that go-to score that you can just give them the ball, let them go to work, and watch the team coast to an easy victory. They didn't have that. They don't have that right now, especially with their best players missing. And so you're looking at when things eventually pick up on the Warriors' side of things or if they just get a little bit of high fire, if they catch a little bit of fire, yeah. who on the Miami side is going to be able to match that? They right. don't have anybody. They especially did not have anybody. Especially that Warriors' tonight. team that is – like that's what they do. They just make a flurry of three-pointers, and that's right. basically what they did in the second half. Yep. And the Heat did whatever the opposite of a flurry is, right? They, it was a drought. It was a drought. It was one – one three pointer the entire second half, and I don't even remember it. So, are you? I mean, can we get into why no Cole Swider? Why no? No, no. I don't care. I don't like Cole Swider. I like Cole Swider. He's not. The He's answer, not. <laughs> he doesn't help you beat the Warriors tonight. You lost to them by uh, what's what's thirteen plus eight twenty one. Yes. You lost to them by twenty one points. Cole Swider's not scoring twenty one points in this game. No, I. I, I I, I'm done. I, I've, I've seen people like talk about, oh, like Eric Spolstra. I can't believe he's playing this lineup. Like, what do you want him to do? Half the roster is on 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 the injured list. Like, I know that there was minutes there with no Terry Rozier, no Bam Adebayo. I just you make up the rotation. Like, it's not easy to figure out how to get your best lineups on the court when none of your lineups are very good. And Eric Spolstra, I think, was searching for a hot hand in the second half. I mean, there were times, David, where Haywood Highsmith was in. When in offensive possessions, like three seconds left on the on on the in the quarter, and they had an and they had the ball, and you usually go with the hands team in that situation. Haywood Highsmith is probably the opposite of an offensive leaning player. Like he might be the most negative offensive player, most neutral offensive player on this roster, but because he went three for three in the first half, Eric Spolster was like, you're maybe he's score. the hand. Yeah, yeah <laughs> it's like I saw that and I was like, oh, that's what this game is. It's just Eric Spolster's being like, maybe Haywood has it tonight. And just throwing him out there, and Haywood got the shot, and he got blocked in a, with a mid-range jumper uh, by Andrew Wiggins, I think. And so, I don't know. Uh, the turnovers didn't help them. the The lack of three-point shooting, the lack of ball movement, really didn't help them. I did think that they could have played better. There were so many possessions, and this has been a recurring theme lately with Bam Adebayo getting it on the low block. He gets the double team that they've been sending basically since Tyler Duncan and Kevin Love were out of the rotation. They've just every opponent sending the double at Jimmy when he's available, sending the double at Bam Adebayo every time they get into the paint. And there was literally like uh, Malik Allen and Karan Butler, Miami's assistant coaches, on the sideline, waving their hands, going crisscross, like yeah. with Miami's signature play. Like guys on the on the weak side, just literally just switch spots, like do something, any kind of semblance of ball movement would have been welcome. And they're just all just kind of standing around watching Bam not do anything because he's got three defenders on him at that point. And so they could have played better, but I don't know that like a different rotation or different lineups or anything help them win this game. That, that's fair. Yeah, I, I don't think Spo deserves any blame for tonight's loss. I, I don't even know that the players themselves, I mean, look. I agree with you. There's just, you can't look at Patty Mills at age 36 
and, and say he's our, he should be our savior. <laughs> what the, he's, he's playing. Tonight. He's playing because nobody else can play at this point. You know, yeah. uh, you know, either it's Cole Swider or or, or Alondis Williams and, or somebody, but they just don't have the guys on this roster. I like guys those guys. Are, yeah, but they're not the answer. That's, they they're on two-way be. contracts for a reason. <laughs> That's right. If you're asking the two-way contract guys to save you, you got bigger way problems. bigger problems. Um, let's get into whether or not uh, this loss cost the Heat a mm. chance to climb to the number six seed in the Eastern Conference. We're going to talk about that and get to your listener questions after this here on Locked On Heat. Today's episode is brought to you by eBay Motors. Passion, drive, and patience. What brings home the winning trophy is also what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance from superchargers to roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more. Whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has got you covered. No, speed, power, style, something that heat completely lack with over 122 what is that? <laughs> with over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die you'll always find exactly what you're looking for and with ebay guaranteed fit your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back because with ebay motors you're burning rubber not cash with all the parts you need at the prices you want it's easy to turn your car into the mvp and bring home that win keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com eligible items only exclusions do apply and the ebay guaranteed fit only available to u.s customers Thanks for making Locked on Heat your first listen every day. Make sure you're subscribed on YouTube and on your favorite podcast app. Are you watching Fox Sports or ESPN on your TV all day? Have to turn down the volume with all that shouting? Make the switch to Locked on Sports Today, a free 24-7 sports streaming channel program for you every day to bring you the biggest stories without all the screaming. Locked on Sports Today brings you can't-miss analysis, opinions, and news streaming 24-7 on YouTube or the free Amazon Fire TV channels app, part of the Lockdown Podcast Network, your team every day. Before we get to some of these listener questions here, uh, we said going into this four-game homestand that they needed Miami to go a minimum of 3-1. and one. You went so far as to say 4-0. and oh. yep. uh, Both of those scenarios are not out the window. Nope. They are 1-2 uh, no and two on this homestand. Uh, a loss to New Orleans. They beat Cleveland. They lost, obviously, tonight to Golden State. They get Portland on Friday night. So best case scenario, you can go two and two here. You look at the rest of the schedule. We also said kind of at the beginning of that homestand, you got to go eight and five over the final 13 games. There's 10 games left. If my math is correct, now they have to go seven and three mm -hmm. the rest of the way. Two back-to-backs. Let's call those scheduled losses. If you beat them, great. Let's call them scheduled losses. That means you can win. That, that you can lose <laughs> one of the next eight, eight games. games that are not the second night of back-to-backs with the rest disadvantage. You've got game. You've got obviously the game in Port against Portland on Friday night. Who knows with this team? I have no idea. Just I guess depends on who's going to be available. We'll talk about Jimmy Butler's late scratch here in a second. Um, and then you've got games against the Knicks, against the Sixers. There's a must-win game in April against the Indiana Pacers that we've already talked about. The Rockets game where we'll have our watch party. Hopefully a win. <laughs> Hopefully a win, but that's one of those uh, scheduled back-to-back -back losses. But either way, that's what the uh, two-for-one beers are for. Um, <laughs> ease the pain. I just ease the pain it, it there. Is, it is. They, they, they messed up a good opportunity there. And, yeah. and I'm, the more I see it, the more this season plays out the way it does. I, I'm thinking that the <laughs> Heat and a, a play-in seed – is much more likely at this point, which makes things dangerous because, again, a one-off matchup, and, and we recall last year, last year's run was magical, and I thought the whole season long that they did have the potential to make some noise in the playoffs. That did come to fruition, but we all kind of conveniently overlooked the fact that it required an incredible hot shooting night from Max Struess with a few minutes left in the game in order to salvage that second play-in game against the Chicago Bulls, and if not for that, they don't have the opportunity to go on that magical run to the NBA right. Finals. So you don't ever want to be in a position where you need fire for 48 minutes because guess what? The other team is looking to make a magical run there on their own as well. So it, it's not looking good for the Miami Heat. So I don't want to necessarily be a downer after one loss, but it's much more daunting for Miami considering they lost two games that were pretty winnable. Yeah. For so, I think this team is going to need to get to 46 wins. This is why we did the math that way. I still feel like they're going to do it for some reason. I don't know why. I still feel like they're going to climb to six. But, man, oh. a, a first-round matchup against Cleveland is so much more preferable than a first-round matchup against one of Boston or Milwaukee, depending on which of these play-in games uh, you end up, if you make the playoffs at all. Because, to your point, 
the playing tournament, the variance in that is is such that it's not a guarantee, even if maybe you are the better team. And I do think if you look at the playing bracket, the Miami Heat are the better team. Sure. The thing is, I actually don't really know what this team is because it's not been healthy this whole time, and I'm just waiting for it to get healthy and click into place. But there are some things like Jimmy Butler and Bam Adebayo, when they play together, the Heat are just a plus five per 100 possessions, which is obviously better than their usual net rating, but it's only like a good net rating. It's not... Right. A top three or four seed in the East type of net rating. Like the Knicks have lineups with better net ratings. Milwaukee, Boston, Cleveland, like all these teams have better net rate uh, lineups with better net ratings. And so even when Miami was sort of been healthy, it hasn't been that overwhelmingly positive either. It would be one thing if we saw like a small sample of, hey, this is what this team looks like with Jimmy Bam, Tyler, Nikola Jovic, like whatever, whoever is going to be in that lineup. This is their ace lineup, and they're outscoring teams by 12.5 points per 100 possessions with that group in 70 minutes. Like, we have nothing like that. Did we see that last year? I think we saw a little bit of it last year, but the other problem last year was the three-point shooting thing was so yes. weirdly off right. that that's the thing that sort of snapped into place right. in the in the postseason. And again, if there was something to snap into place this postseason run, it would just be health. Correct. But it would be so much weirder this time because we just... I feel like the season hasn't even really started for the Heat, and it... Almost and it's almost over. It literally is almost over. So um, yeah, I don't think it, we can overstate strange. that enough. Like ten games left in a season, and I have no idea what this team is. <laughs> Nobody does, man. And, and I think it's just you know we could be very dire and be like, oh, this team sucks. It's not gonna, it's gonna be out of the plan. It's not even gonna do anything, etc. Or we could be overly optimistic, and and it, neither of them feels true in any sense because the reality is that this team continues to redefine itself on a daily basis. I don't know. Had Jimmy been in the lineup tonight? Do they have enough to win? Obviously, yes. Does that guarantee you win? No, it does not. So this team is just constantly searching, redefining itself, and I don't, I don't know if it's just yeah. exhaustion at this point either. I think they're just they're going through some turmoil internally. I would have to say they're injured. Yeah, they're they injured. They don't have their good players. They do. I, mean, I don't like. I think it's asking weighing on whether whoever's... the Heat, if if the Heat, asking if the Heat can make a deep playoff run is. It's Utah. as good as asking whether or not the Harlem Globetrotters could make a deep playoff run. Like it's just hypothetical things. Like I don't even know what it would be. It's like it's like that old age. Could North Carolina make the, the, Eastern the Harlem Conference Globetrotters playoffs? do exist though? You know they're not hypothetical. Right. But it's like a, it's it's a hype. But like the Miami Heat, I guess that theoretically exists. I don't know. Let's get to some of your listener questions. Thanks to everybody who sent them in on Twitter using the hashtag, hashtag #AskLOHeat. Locked on Heat at gmail.com. Locked on Heat on Instagram. This comes from Adam who writes in. This team is clearly be is. This is weirdly worded. This team is clearly okay just being a playing team. They choose to sit players when they can play. Do you agree, David? Do you agree? Uh, they choose to sit players when they can play. No, I I, I think they're being cautious. To Jimmy Butler or Kevin Love. I think they're being cautious. I don't think you're going to force Jimmy to do anything. So if he was available or not, uh, that's. It's a moot point. I don't think you're going to get him to go out there. Should we get? Should we do some background on Jimmy Butler? So for those, uh, I guess, who don't know, Jimmy the internet Butler, sleuths. <laughs> I mean, I, I don't know if we need to go sleuthing, but he was a late addition this morning after shoot around. He was reported as probable because of a non-COVID illness, and it was told to us like a head illness, like a, whatever that means. A head cold. A head cold or something like that. A, but he a was headache, also perhaps or something. He was also seen on Monday <laughs> at the Miami Open. Right. So where he might have caught the flu or something. Or the heat or the drinks or who knows. There Two are a lot of one drinks at the Taurus, perhaps. There are, a lot of people, hour. there are a lot of people suggesting that he might just have been hung over. That maybe he put himself in a situation where he was intoxicated. Do you buy it? In the Monday sun? I, I don't know. I really I don't. don't. Buy it. I, I don't these think These guys so. have such... These guys don't get hung over. Like they just yeah, get I, fluids pumped into their bodies... They get to you do a full yeah. nap. Hey, this, Jimmy calls in. I'm skipping shoot around. Uh, I'm, I'm taking a long. I, I just need some rest. Okay, cool. Like, and you know how hang, hangovers work. They don't get worse right. as like at like yeah, they're, wor like, they're I, worse the next morning. He was probable and then questioned. I've it. I've never had a hangover that's kept me out for a whole day. I can't imagine Jimmy. I have Butler. literally never missed an NBA game because of a hangover. I can tell you that. <laughs> that that's a good point. I I just I don't think so. I, I think. I don't know, but uh, there's enough smoke there and there's enough frustration even amongst media members that suspect that maybe something deeper and darker is taking place there. So I I have no problem with him going to the Miami, Miami. I have zero no, problem with him doing not. that. It's his off day, do whatever. If I don't I don't think that that is related to what happened, but maybe I'm naive. But even He didn't go to the seat. It's not either way, it's not a great look. Like from a That's PR perspective, it's not a great look. 
That's the thing. It had had the team won, maybe we could have overlooked it. But I think there's enough of this season of him missing games where fans are frustrated because their best player just simply hasn't been available. Can you imagine if it was James Harden? No, like, that's, that's the whole thing. Yeah, he's he's, he's knee deep he in strippers killed, yeah. and, and bands of money, etc. The Miami <laughs> Open, as 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 it as it does at the at tennis that's tournaments. What, that's what it's like now. I, mean, <laughs> I haven't seen the tournament in a while. I've been to a tennis <laughs> tournament in a very long time. Um, so there's that. Are they? I, whether or not they're just okay being a playing team, I, I don't think that that's the case. And I Hopefully wish they it want were to be almost. Situation. I wish it was just a a decision to be a playing team, but right. this is not a decision. Con- they're consciously choosing to be a playing team, but I think it's just the reality of who this team is going through injuries as frequently as they do. They don't want to be in a place where they had to be last year. They, they've said that all season long. They want to avoid that extra possible X factor of a playing mm-hmm. tournament game. So. Do they think that they can go on a deep run? Absolutely. That's a, a, maybe a bigger point. They are n- they are satisfied with whatever seed they might eventually get because they think confidently that they can move past any opponent. And there's reason for that considering the past four years. But at the same time, you don't want to put yourself in a disadvantaged situation, which is exactly what the play-in tournament is. We'll get to some more of your listener questions after this on Locked on Heat. Today's episode is brought to you by Amazon Fire TV. Fire TV is your destination for sports from live games to highlights to in-depth analysis, including the Locked On Podcast Network. Fire TV offers amazing viewing experiences with smart TVs. Are you going to go check out your Amazon Fire TV? As as well as the Fire TV stick that you can plug into your existing TV that provides access to millions of movies and TV episodes, as well as free and live TV. Whether it's opening weekend for baseball, go Marlins, or the college basketball tournament, you're going to want to have a Fire TV. Fire TV recently created Fire TV channels to deliver a constant supply of the latest videos from your favorite sports brands, all for free. That includes all of us over at Locked On and most of the big pro leagues and college conferences. It lets you dive into all the game analysis, highlights, and more to keep up to dates from March Madness, the NBA, Major League Baseball, and so much more. Not to mention great news, entertainment, gaming, travel, cooking videos, whatever you're looking for, you'll find it over on Fire TV channels on Fire TV and Alexa devices. If you haven't checked out Fire TV channels, you should. Trust me on this. To learn more, visit Amazon.com slash locked on fire tv that's amazon.com slash locked on fire tv today's episode also brought to you by nissan are you the kind of driver that likes to push things a little further have you ever wondered what adventure could be around the next corner well our friends over at nissan have a lineup of suvs with the capabilities to take your adventure to the next level i've already told you enough about the rogue i drive one i love it i think it's a perfect combination of city driving it's got good speed got power whatever you're looking for but it can also take you on long road trips it's comfortable it's got everything you're looking for but if you're looking for something a little bit bigger then why don't you give the 2024 nissan pathfinder a shot it's got up room up to eight for, for up to eight people with an expansive cargo capacity and a advanced available four by four capability with 284 horsepower there's no sacrificing power when it comes to the nissan pathfinder but you can also give the nissan armada a try what it will change what you expect from a full-size suv it's a rugged four by four that can seat up to eight but in full first-class luxury and style. Tow bigger and explore further in the 2024 Armada. Take the Nissan Rogue, the Nissan Pathfinder, or the Nissan Armada, and go find your next big adventure. Shop NissanUSA.com. Thanks for making Locked on Heat your first listen every day. Make sure you're subscribed on YouTube and on your favorite podcast app. Let's uh, run through some of these last few listener questions this one comes from ej brooks who writes in can we end the patty mills experiment short answer is no no right. unless tyler hero and duncan robinson come back soon yep that's basically it all right puff miami writes in should we just shut it down for the year we're not healthy and it doesn't seem like it's gonna get any better with the amount of games left the heat won't do it but it just seems like the best option right now I scoffed when I read this, yep. and then I thought about it, and I don't hate it. It would be almost impossible for Miami to drop out of the playing tournament altogether. It would be almost impossible, almost impossible, for them to even drop into the 9-10 game at this point. They're five games up of the ninth-place Chicago Bulls right now. Yeah. If you hypothetically just shut down, all right, Jimmy, you're done. Bam, you're done. Kevin's done. Tyler's done. They're, they're, Maybe Duncan Robinson's able to come back. They're, I don't. They're twelve games over the Brooklyn Nets, who are completely out of the play-in seating. So right. If Miami lost every game 
they'd still be a bit, uh, above the Brooklyn Nets at this point. So there's no catching up to them. So, so hypothetically, like, they what if they just shut seed. it down? What if they just shut it down for the rest of your year? Terry Rozier, go out, buddy, score, take 50 shots a night. Hey, Cole Swider, Alondis, Jamal Cain, go crazy. come on down. Orlando Let Robinson. Nikola Jovic play 30 minutes a night like he did tonight. Let Jaime kind of find his rhythm. I don't know. Like, and then you're fresh for the play-in? Go 0 and 10. I mean, they would, you would win. You would win some of these games. Like you at least no, you got you those. Like, you, you got the last two Toronto games, who are the best tanking team in the league right now. They have figured. They have cracked the code on tanking. They're making up injuries for their players. They're doing the okay, whole thing. Okay, worst best worst case scenario in this case would be going 0 and 11, right, to finish and up then the falling season. into the 9 10 bracket and then having to win two to go into the playoff. Which so they, maybe you don't shut it down yet. You get like three or four more wins. And then you shut it down. No, nah, they won't do it. They, you of know, they, they want won't. to. Yeah. Uh, it's it's fun to entertain because again, there's a lot of frustration ramping up about this point. But they're not going to do that. Uh, players are just going to miss time. And again, everybody's going to say we have enough. And when they don't, they're just going to have to look forward to the next game. Brian writes in. Suppose the Heat actually do have their full team healthy and ready to go for the playoffs. How much chemistry would that roster have? Tons. Bam, Hero, and Jimmy have only played 21 games together. Have those three plus Terry Rozier even played five? No. Has Miami played any games with their top nine guys? Mm. Who are their top nine guys? That, that's still up for debate. So, so we don't have answers to a lot of those questions. I, I think chemistry tends to be a little overrated in terms of oh. like you know. I, I, well, Hot take. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think there's enough chemistry between those. It's a lot of the Phoenix Suns. The, yeah, I mean, I, I think that's more about roster construction than chemistry. Too um, many stars. Yeah, <laughs> not no, Miami's problem. No, definitely not. Um, uh, I think it's more about Grayson Allen being your go-to player, or you know, Eric Best Gordon. Best three-point shooter in the league right now. That's true. That's true. <laughs> um, you know, I, I think that. There's enough chemistry between the big three, uh, Miami's quote unquote big three or best three players. Yeah, I think they'll, they they figured it out in the past. I don't think that's the the problem here. I think once Tyler, if and when Tyler comes back, is there a question about whether Tyler comes back at all? I guess there could this be this regular season. Of course, we have guess, no. There is no timetable. I but I think if I think he'll be back at. I would guess he'd be back at some point, but I'm not reporting I also wouldn't have guessed that he was going to miss the last two months. Of course either, not. Well, whatever, it was out it was. with the knee sprain, and then the foot thing got aggravated, and he needed a PRP injection. Here's the thing. Chemistry is a problem, but it's not because of the injuries. Chemistry is a problem because chemistry has been a problem with those three guys. Bam and Jimmy don't space the floor. Tyler Hero ostensibly does, theoretically does, but doesn't like to necessarily all the time. And so like Jimmy Butler and Tyler Hero have never really meshed. Tyler Hero, as a playmaker, has never really gotten to the point where he could just run pick and roll with Bam, especially when they're both on the court with Jimmy, who does not space the floor and makes running that pick and roll even harder when all these teams are packing the paint. So chemistry is an issue with those three, but it's not an issue because of injuries. Uh, I mean, maybe if these guys had played more than 21 games together all season, they would have hashed something out. I guess there's that. But we haven't really seen great chemistry with that group over the last couple of years either. Yeah. So I think that's part of it. It's I think that an overlap I, of skill sets. It's a very, it's an over like they're all th- those are, those are Miami's three best players. There's no debate, but I they don't yeah, complement each other. They don't other. really complement each other well. Now Bam and Jimmy starting to take some threes. Does that open things up for Tyler Hero? Does Tyler Hero or is, does he get more space to run pick and roll with Bam? All these other things. I think that's a fair question. Um, I I I don't know. I I don't. I think chemistry could be a problem when you get to some other parts of the lineup. But I also think. This is an Eric Spolstra question, too, and I trust Eric Spolstra to figure that stuff out. That's the thing that I trust Spo with is to get in the lab and, and tinker and figure out some lineups. The problem is that he hasn't really been able to use the regular season for that, where he was kind of able to use the regular season last year for that and then was thrown a curveball when Tyler Hero got hurt I in mean, the first game of the playoffs. So that's what I'm saying. Like, Spo has figured these questions out before. Yeah. Give me the healthy roster. Let him figure it out. I would pick that over anything, obviously. But... Um, yeah, I just I think there's bigger questions. Moreover, I mean, aside from those three, I think a lot of problems are alleviated when you have somebody who can space the floor as well as Duncan Robinson. Like he has been mm-hmm. such a solution for a lot of Miami's problems in terms of the overlap of skill sets and everything else because he has, I think, the one skill set in terms of his long range shooting, and he's so good at it that is not something that anybody else in the roster has duplicated. Speed round, last two questions. Never phased. 
writes in, this is an interesting uh, Twitter handle considering the question here. Should we worry about the heat or should we stay cool because of the same situation as last year? That's from Never Phased. One word answer, worry or stay cool? Uh, stay cool. I'm going to go worry. Mark writes in, uh, tonight, like many nights, has been disappointing. But if we can't make a deep playoff run in the postseason, is it time to blow it up? We can go yes or no on this. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, Pat Riley said as much, so we're not breaking news here. This is basically the last opportunity for Miami to show that they have enough. That's why they made the trade for Terry Rozier, to complement the best three players on Miami's mm -hmm. roster. I thought you owed it to this to the last year's finals team to run it back in a sense just to see what this team was all about. And fairly, they didn't really get a chance to see what this team is all about. It's been hurt, and there's 10 games left. Uh, they, obviously, they tried to go get Damian Lillard, but you know that, that just out. made sense, and it didn't work out. And according to the reporting around that whole situation, they were never desperate to get that deal done anyway because they were happy with their team, right? So there's all of that, but you just said it. Pat Riley basically said it on Media Day or uh, his, his press conference that he does before every year. Yeah, this is this is the last. This is probably the last run with this group, and then you start start retooling and and figuring out what the next step is, the next era of Miami Heat basketball. And so, yeah, I think that's, that's pretty much that's a whole that slate of off season here. shows for oh, yeah. us. Yeah, we've got plenty of episodes to deal with that, but for now, we're looking forward to the playoffs. So, mm. let's see what happens. Hopefully not looking playoffs. forward. Hopefully the playoffs. Hopefully the playoffs. Hopefully the playoffs. <laughs> okay. Thanks for making Locked on Heat your first listen every day. Hit that subscribe button on YouTube and follow us on your podcast app. Watch party, April 5th. Locked on Heat holding the watch party for Heat game for Miami's game against the Houston Rockets at the Taurus in Coconut Grove. Meet us. Game starts at 8 p.m. Happy hour all night long. We're going to need it.